Well, folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. I'm Todd Kessner, and I'm back out here uh, at the gun range outside of Bozeman, Montana. And today I've got a antique 1889 Remington double barrel shotgun. And uh, as usual, uh, out here at the gun range, you're going to hear a lot of uh, gunfire going off around us. We never have the place to ourselves. It's a public range and, and is well used, which is which is a uh, which is a good thing. Uh, but today is the uh, day before the big game opener in the state of Montana and so everybody is out here making sure their rifles are on uh, last minute kind of rifle check and so there's gonna be a tremendous amount of, of noise um, and we're filming this this video a little bit backwards because we couldn't get into a bay today uh, when we wanted to when we wanted to start and I wanted to also shoot some skeet with the with the antique shotgun with black powder loads so we did that first and so uh, if you happen to notice a, a welt rising on the side of my cheekbone here uh, that is more than likely from some very poor form of shotgun shooting. Uh, the the uh, stock was belting me in the cheek more than I realized until I got done and it started to welt up. So I got to go back to school on, on uh, skeet shooting and trap shooting and shotgun mounting and all of that uh, and really think about how, how my form is. I did manage to break a few clays, uh, but it was not an impressive uh, show. And so I think that uh, maybe of course, I do most of my work with rifle and, and shotgun, and um, or rifle and pistol rather, and I'm better shot there. Uh, I got to work on shotgun, but uh, and form and, and everything else. But it's still a lot of fun, and so we're going to back up now and come back to the to the range part and uh, talk about this 80, 1889 Remington. So Remington came out with double barrel shotguns, the Remington Whitmore in 1873. And the big difference with the early double barrel uh, is that it had the called the hammer lifter. So if you wanted to open the barrels, uh, the lever here would lift up to the top and then the barrels would, would fall open. When they got to the 1882 model, then you went to the regular slide it to the side lever, which is which you're used to on a double barrel shotgun, and so Remington went to that. Uh, there are also some other neat features on this. Uh, the difference from the 1882 to this one, which is an 1889 Remington, is really pretty much the hammer shape. The very early ones had a real tall, almost a jackrabbit ear or a rabbit ear uh, hammer spur on it, uh, and then they got smaller and a very tight C shape toward the end, and so the way to identify a lot of these from 1882 to 1889 is that shape of that of that hammer. This shotgun's been redone. Uh, it has been color case hardened on the receiver. Very pretty colors to it. The stock is absolutely gorgeous. The barrels are nearly pristine and so I can put uh, some pretty heavy black powder loads through these barrels and probably some low nitro if I if I wanted to, but the barrel's in really good shape. Uh, the gun's been redone, and I'm going to step uh, make a step forward here and just to have us focus in on this a little bit and just show you a couple other features of this shotgun. If you remember the the greener uh, shotgun from the early 1870s, I'm going to compare that to this one. And uh, let me step up here and we can take a closer look. So one of the what we, one of the things anyway that we talked about on the on the greener shotgun was it didn't have rebounding hammers and so if you wondered what that was uh, by 1889 most shotguns had rebounding hammers so if I pull the trigger and this hammer will strike the firing pin it would, the shell would go off and it automatically bounces back to half cock and stays there so that's your rebounding hammer it'll rebound from fire position after you pull the trigger bounce back half cock and it's right there another feature that you would see later in these later shotguns or actually is the feature that's missing is that fence we talked about on the on the uh, greener it was a leftover from the era when you put a percussion cap on a shotgun and it would protect your face if that cap happened to break apart and throw some uh, some copper back at you and by 1889 we're seeing that that fence is no longer there so that tradition of having that that fence even on a cartridge gun uh, isn't there anymore and so that's another feature that you don't find in the 89 Remington there were five different grades. Uh, there's a regular steel barrel, uh, there was a wire wrapped barrel, and then there was a Damascus barrel was the grade three. This has a very intricate to, uh, to, of uh, Damascus barrel pattern on it. See if I can get a good look. Hopefully you can pick up some of that on the camera and see that Damascus pattern in there. It's a very intricate pattern, it's a beautiful pattern. And the barrel has been rebrowned on the outside when they, when they redid the shotgun. 
Uh, so this would be a grade three. If you went to grade four, you would have a little bit of engraving. You went to grade five and you'd have a lot of engraving. So kind of a, of a middle of the road, beautiful Damascus barrel shotgun. Another neat feature is that our firing pins go pretty much straight into the shell. And on the greener, and even on the 78 Colt, they come in and firing pins come in at a real steep angle. And sometimes, if you have a deep primer, you would uh, not be able to reach that primer with the firing pin. And so, with one that comes straight in, very seldom do you find a, a round that'll misfire in this gun because that firing pin comes straight into the shell and not coming down at an angle and just striking at an angle. Uh, the other thing on this gun, we talked about on the greener, how it had the wedge, the leftover from the muzzle loading era, uh, the, to pop the forestock off. This does have a very easy off levered forestock, so you can take the gun apart uh, very, very easy and put it together very easy as well. So some really neat uh, features on this. It's, uh, it's an elegant looking gun, a, a beautiful checkered grip, pistol grip. Uh, and just uh, and just kind of a pleasure to hold as well. That's one thing about these old guns is, is uh, they just they just fit your hand. I've carried it in the field, and it's just a handy gun to carry. It's like a lever gun to carry uh, versus a rifle with a scope and, and that. It's just they they just for a natural fit to the uh, just really to the human body and how in the balance and, and just a just a pleasure to carry around in the field. So a very beautiful gun. We're going to pattern this gun with a couple of black powder ro loads. I've got 100 grains of double F Go-X in our black powder loads. I can load this up pretty much as much as I want with black powder especially. And uh, one and one eighth ounce of number sixes. So it's kind of a pheasant gun is the idea. So we're going to give that a try. I'm also going to get the uh, the uh, uh, choke gauge out. Couldn't think of the term. Going to get the choke gauge out as well and show you the chokes on this barrel because this has not been borne out, bored out. It is a, it's a good solid barrel. So uh, the chokes are still intact in the end of the barrel. It has been restricted toward the end. We're going to see what those chokes are and then we're going to put a, a pattern down range. All right, I got the breech open here. So we're going to leave this open and, and check our, our chokes on the choke gauge. And uh, I'm looking at the left barrel right now and we're falling right between modified and, and full choke on a 12 gauge so improved modified what I think what we call that today and let me try the the right barrel as well and it's going to exactly the same place so it's between modified and full both barrels sometimes they'd be different because you'd shoot close and then you'd shoot something further away uh, but it appears that this one is awfully close to the same thing both of them between modified and, and full choke and it uh, doesn't matter which, which trigger you pull first if you had both the hammers back because you got the same thing on either barrel. Uh, but that's good to know, so that, uh, that gives us a choke that's good to about 30 to 40 yards, and we've got a target set up here at, at 30, so let's pattern it at 30 with number sixes and, and see what that does. All right, I'm gonna try the uh, right barrel first, so let's load her up. Hammer back, make sure my ear plugs are in good. And I'm going to put right on the uh, black dot out there, and let's see, let's see what we have. All right, boy, that thing will belt you. Let's go down and take a look at that pattern. See what we uh, see what we see, and then try the other barrel. All right, well, we're looking at a not a bad pattern at all. This one uh, definitely doesn't have a lot of holes in it. It's pretty evenly spaced. That choke would help with that. Uh, number six, so there's a pretty good sized pellet, which makes fewer pellets in the payload, obviously, because they're a little bigger. But uh, got several in the black, quite a few in the black. I was aiming right at the bottom of the black. Got a nice pattern, a little bit to the right. But still, pretty pretty solid pattern. The only hole I'd say is right up here, and of course with another with another test, a different shell that might be totally different. So uh, pretty happy with it. Got a lot of pellets on the on this target, and uh, feel like I got a pretty good field gun here. And so if any any of the mistakes that I made, the misses that I made are obviously my fault on this one. And uh, with number six, has got a pretty good pretty good pattern so pretty pleased with that let's switch out the paper and let's do a do a left barrel and see how that one does all right i'm ready to shoot that left barrel now and see how that goes but one thing i had forgotten to say uh, is that uh, the the greener 
is an English shotgun if you watch the greener videos and that one I had to trim that case back I've got the old-fashioned paper cases with the modern primer but on that greener uh, for that English shotgun I had to trim the case back to two and a half inches when open uh, and of course you know that most 12 gauges today are two and three quarter that standard didn't come around for for a long long time because this is an 89 Remington this thing has uh, is chambered for two and five eighths inch shells and so I had to cut these to two and five eighths I had to cut the greener to two and a half and then a modern shotgun would be two and three quarters so it's getting to be a lot to remember anymore so I went to a, a office supply store and got the little circular dots on a on a sticky sheet and can run them through my printer now and I can put all the information I want just like they did in the 1800s and before they went to the to the uh, star crimp put all the information right on the end of the shell because it's getting harder to, to just by picking it up to know if I've got a uh, what size shot I've got is one thing but then uh, powder load length of case all of that stuff as I'm going from uh, from the greener at two and a half to two and five eighths to two and three quarters and so I've got to have all these labeled to remember what in the world's going on so uh, if you ever get a chance to opt to, uh, to shoot a couple of old-fashioned shotguns or load the shells for them remember to take good notes because it's really easy to get that mixed up so let's shoot this left barrel and let's see kind of pattern we got there All right, let's take a look. Well, we got a pretty typical pattern again. Uh, it's a, a typical pattern that would come out of a choked gun at this distance. And so I've got several holes in the black that you can't really see, but I can feel them in there and can see them at the right angle. And so I've got a pretty good pattern towards the center. A lot of shot low, and uh, that just makes sense that they we're kind of tapering off as we're getting closer to the, or getting further away out there to the target. And as we approach the target, the shot, of course, is dropping. So, um, got to think about that uh, as you're shooting at a live game animal. But uh, still, pretty, pretty good pattern. Not a lot of holes. You know, it takes several shots with each barrel to really get an average. But at least, at least this tells me that uh, I've got a viable gun that's going to put together a pretty good pattern at, at 30 yards. So. Uh, we're going to show you some some of the skeet footage that we did a little bit earlier when we couldn't get on the range and we could get on the on the uh, skeet range and so we did that one first and so we'll switch over to that here in just a second but before we leave this part of the range i just want to thank you for watching uh, i want you if you would please um, hit subscribe that helps us out a lot and also hit the thumbs up button and that helps as well so if you like the video hit that thumbs up hit subscribe and we will see you next time back here at frontier western heritage thanks for coming all right well we're going to give this thing a try this 1889 remington i've got some black powder load same ones i i used for pattering the shotgun we're going to give it a try over here in the skeet field and and just see if there's uh if i can if i can hit any of these on the move well cool. Got it, second shot. All right, pull it. Make checky checky. Oh, yeah, now, now. oh, now I'm going to checky checky. Are you standing? I might. Okay. There you go. You got that one, didn't you? you got that on film? I think so. These things kick like a mule. Does it? Part of the problem is I'm terrible at this.